John chapter 21. John 21. Folks, Jesus is alive. I'll tell you the honest truth. If, if He wasn't, I wouldn't be playing church. Jesus is alive and He's real. And he's in heaven and I know God because of Him. And that is absolutely wonderful. If you think of the import and the impact of that statement, it's incredible. Anyone can know God because of Jesus. And that is just an amazing truth. So we're here today. This is a special day. This is a day that we celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. I cannot stand a crucifix. And I don't mean to be unkind to the folks that like to have and carry crucifixes, but I can't stand them because they've got a dead Jesus on them. That's right. Mm -hmm. and Jesus isn't dead. He's not on a cross. He died on the cross, was on there temporarily, and He took, became sin for us. And after He did that, my friend, He was separated from God the Father for three 24-hour periods. And after that, it was finished. It really was finished. And Jesus rose again. As a matter of fact, in case you weren't at our resurrection service this morning at the beach, I'm just going to read the story of the resurrection in John chapter, John chapter 20. But I want to preach to you this morning a message entitled Ramifications of the Resurrection. Ramifications of the Resurrection. Of course, what does it mean that Jesus has risen? And we're going to look at the examples of the disciples immediately after Jesus' resurrection and see what kind of impact it had on their lives. And then we'll make application of that to our own lives. Let's just go ahead and read in John chapter 20. Let's read the story of the resurrection. I, I don't know if I should call it story. An account would probably be a more an accurate way of saying it. Let's read the account of the resurrection in John chapter 20. If you're all there in John chapter 20, would you just look up this way shortly so that I can see that everybody's found it. Okay, all right, John chapter 20, we'll begin reading in verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, under the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They've taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they've laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then come a Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, of course this is John's modest way of referring to himself, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says, Then went in that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. He saw and he believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise from the, again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Mary stood at, was without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto him, unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith with him, Sir, if thou have borne him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, and your father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she would seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Let's go ahead and continue reading on, because this has to do with our text today. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord's help as we look to the Scripture this morning. And as we run to Our gracious Heavenly Father, we recognize this morning that without you we can do nothing. 
God, without Jesus Christ, there's no way that we can begin to approach the requirements for going to heaven. God, we know that there's no way that, first of all, we could stop sinning, much less take care of all the sin that we've committed, which has made us your enemy. Lord, I just ask that this morning, as we look to your word, that you would very clearly lay on our hearts the importance of the resurrection. God, help us to see that it's not just something that happened, but it's something that happened to us. God, I just ask that this morning as we look to your word that you would challenge us, that you would encourage us, and that we want to serve you. We ask this in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, Jesus is alive and he's in heaven. A couple of years ago, we preached a message on, on the Resurrection Sunday, and we preached a message on the reasons that Jesus is alive and He's in heaven. You know, when Luke wrote the book of Acts, or the Acts of the early church, or the Acts of, really, the Holy Spirit and through the apostles in the early church, when He did so, he one of the things He pointed out that Jesus had shown Himself alive after His passion. Of course, we know that the passion refers to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And of course, the resurrection is the most important part of the Gospel, really is. Uh, be careful, Christian, when you share Jesus with people. Be careful about telling them that Jesus died on the cross and not telling them that He's alive. Listen, a Savior who is not risen is not a Savior at all, and that's the truth, because He's dead. And a dead Savior can't do anything for us. Maybe He could redeem us to God, possibly. I don't know the theology of that. Maybe He could redeem us to God, but He couldn't do anything for us now. And we have a Savior who's alive and He's in heaven. And He's our High Priest. He's our Intercessor. Make sure when you tell people how to know that they're going to heaven that you tell them that Jesus became sin for them. He died for their sins. But He didn't just die for their sins. He was buried so that we could identify with the burial, with His burial with our sins. And uh, Christian, I want to tell you something. The burial of Jesus is incredibly important. So you don't have to be bound by sin anymore. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not obey the lust of flesh. And I'm telling you something, knowing uh, being saved and not having spiritual victory is miserable. It's a miserable way to live. And Jesus Christ's burial enables us to not just have eternal life, it enables us to have eternal victory in this life. Uh, we have eternal life from the moment we're saved, my friend. God didn't save us so that we could die and then have eternal life afterward. Eternal life begins the moment you've trusted Christ as your Savior. And it doesn't end ever. It begins at the time you trust Christ, but it never ends. And so someday we'll pass from this life into the next. We'll, we'll leave this physical body and we'll take on perhaps a temporary body unless uh, we make it to the rapture. And I think there's a good chance of that when Christ comes and just takes us all up into heaven and catches us up. I'm looking forward to that day. But uh, it, I, it, the, the, the Christian life isn't just something that is uh, for when we're in heaven. It's for now. It's for now. And that's what we're going to look at today. Well, not only are we, can we identify with the burial of Jesus and, and uh, be risen with Christ, but my friend, the resurrection is what the gospel's about. The resurrection's when it all happened, and we're going to see that from the text today, the importance of the resurrection really will. Well, Jesus had promised his disciples earlier on in the book of John, of course we know all the gospel accounts, give the account of Jesus and the promise that when, uh, at, when he leaves, he, he told his uh, disciples, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he talked about the future. He said, my father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. And so he said, what I'm doing is I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And so when Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples, of course, they were very sorrowful at the concept of his death. Jesus, if you leave us, then what? But he said, I'm going to pray the Father that he'll give you another comforter. He said, I'm your comforter now, but I'm going to pray the Father he'll give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, and that he may abide with you forever. And so that's what we saw happen in John chapter 20 when Jesus came into his, in the room and he says to the disciples, peace be unto you. And he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Spirit. It's a new era. It's a new time period in which every single person who believes in Jesus Christ is able to have God's Holy Spirit dwell and live in them. My friend, I want to tell you something. This is a distinctive of knowing Jesus Christ. 